I'm Allison Coe coming to you from Portland, Oregon. I'm a hypnotist here and I've been having some really interesting sessions the last couple months, but two of them really stuck out to me because they were back to back and they were just a week ago. So I'm kind of going to move forward. Normally I share these sessions in kind of a consecutive manner, but these were these really got my attention and it must mean that it's for me to share with you because it could mean something to you or it could help somebody in some way. That is the only reason why I do these videos is to get messages out that could possibly help someone. Now, thank you to my clients who agreed to share portions of their sessions. They were very open and willing and uh, lovely people. All right, so session one. Oh, and by the way, this is <laughs> this is going to be a pretty long video, more likely than not, and there will probably be dog barks and people knocking on the door, and <laughs> I've already recorded this <laughs> three different times today, and anyway, there are major interruptions, but whatever, starting over. And so, every, every time I get better, no, I'll probably still suck. But anyway, here we go. <laughs> this will be long. Come back if you need to. So, first client, wonderful woman. She uh, has had several instances of being diagnosed with cancer. She's healed. She's gotten it back in a different form. And right now, currently, uh, the cancer is uh, in the bones. All right, so she did have some questions about that. And first of all, though, we drop down in the hypnosis and she says, you know, I don't really feel like I have a body. I'm surrounded by all of these beautiful colors of light. I'm floating. And um, she says the, the light, they have a consciousness and I can speak to them. And um, she says the pink is there to heal her heart. The green is there to heal her body. The blue is there for transmuting her energy. And she says, um, she says she feels like, so I'm asking her, do you need to invite these colors in to help you? Do they, do they need permission from you to help? You know, cause they're, they're kind of outside of her at this point. And she says, yeah, I feel like they're always with me outside of me, but they've been waiting for me to, to give them permission to come in and start helping her. And um, as soon as she gives them permission, because she gives them permission right there, she says she feels like they're them instantly moving to her body and occupy every space. And the light feels like dancing light. And it's so joyful. And she says, she hears them say, this is what we are waiting for, to be invited. Um, so they've been waiting this whole time for her to give permission. And I said, well, what else do they wish to communicate with you? Because this is a consciousness. They can, you know, they can give her messages. So what else would they like to tell you? They, so they proceed to tell her that she's, she is love. And that's all there is. And uh, only love is real. Anything that is not love is false. And she should not be afraid because all there is is just love. Okay, so it says... Um, Let's see, how will you change now that you've given them permission to come in? How else will you change? And she says that um, she sees herself completely embodied. And it's, um, she says she goes somewhere else now. Um, let's see. She says, let's see, I'm somewhere, she says, on earth right now. So she's talking about right now. On earth right now, she's half the time she's someplace else. She's kind of like in this other kind of dreamy place and that, um, and then she kind of comes back, drops down into 3D and she says that uh, when she fully embodies herself and, and these colors start working on her, she'll be in another world all the time. And she says it's so beautiful. She goes there sometimes in her meditations and she sees it like a green meadow and the colors all around her are so vibrant and beautiful. And she says, that's where I live. It's just always complete joy. There's never any more going back and forth. Never, never any more of her vibration going up and down. 
and um, she says it stays high now. I'm hearing my vibration will just stay constant. And, um, and she says, that's what these colors are doing. They're healing every aspect of me and I'll remain in this constantly high vibration. And I said, so will this healing, will it actually send you to a different plane of existence? Is that what you're understanding from this? And she says, I feel like through this healing that I'm moving somewhere else. Um, that my existence kind of went somewhere else, but I'm still physical, not like I died. And um, she says she hears from, from the colors that it's just a different existence um, where everyone will be in a higher state of love, of knowing. And she says it's not like anybody goes anywhere, though. It's a consciousness thing. And I say, how will your life change when you spend 100% of your time then at this higher consciousness? And I said, you, you already said that you'd be able to remain and control your vibration. And, sh and what else will change? She says, I see everything around me changing. I just live in that vibration of love that nothing can penetrate other than that. And everyone around me is the same. And I changed in a way that I became whole. Uh, let's see, I know that I am whole. My soul is whole. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, just completely come into wholeness. And I flow. And there was so much emphasis on that, just that statement. I flow. So that was very, like when I heard her say that, it was so powerful. And she says, there's no thinking about what you have to do. You're, you're using telepathy to connect. You know what you have to do. And she, everyone communicates in a different way. So I, 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 I uh, ask her about this wholeness that she's speaking of. And I say, does that include higher aspects of you and being embodied in your physical self? Because that is actually something that's come through in several of my sessions. This idea that where we're evolving to as a human species is basically we're evolving into holding more of that higher self energy within our physical body instead of kind of reaching outside of us and just having a smaller stream. No, we will actually carry that with us from now on. So that's that's kind of cool and very much validated in here. Um, so I, I'm asking her about that. Does that does that mean these higher aspects of you are going to start coming into your physical self, being embodied in your physical self? And she says, oh yes, I will bring all of these higher levels into my physical body. I bring them all down into me. And I say, well, how, how would you describe that? What does that look like? Um, does it have a color or it's a field of energy? What do, you, what do you see? And she says, it's all colors. And the colors originate from my chakras and they go outward until it's all the way up above my head and the color just keeps going. But they change, the colors change. It's, a, it's higher states of energy and I collapse them all into my body so that I can live in this higher state in my physical body. Now, okay, so we're talking about chakras and we're talking about how chakras are changing. Now, just keep that in mind for the next session. All right, so back to this. So she's talking about how her chakras are, are changing. Um, these higher states of energy just collapse them all into the body so that she can live in this higher state. And I say, do you see the chakras that are outside of your body? Because my understanding, you may not be there yet, but this is my understanding. We also have chakras outside of our body, not just the ones that are in our body. And uh, are these collapsing as well, the ones above your body? And she says, yes. And I said, what is the epicenter of that collapse? If you could, if what is the location? Where are they collapsing to in your, inside your body? And she says, they're inside my heart. And she says, it, it feels absolutely amazing. I honestly, I honestly can't describe it. It's like dying and coming back where you don't want to come back <laughs> because the feeling is so expansive and light is, is love. What I see is pure white light. So that's what this collapse of these chakras and this higher energy, all of it into this singularity right inside of her body. That's what it feels like. So, back to her session. All right, um, and so I'm. So then I'm asking her about the healing 
that the colors are providing because obviously she she needs some physical heal healing so how is that going and she says right now the colors are all swirled together like a vortex and that vortex is through my whole core basically through my chakras and it's just like a tornado just releasing anything in my body that doesn't serve me all right so a tornado is, is ensuing in her body and it's basically just getting rid of junk and she sees dark pieces of debris um, dark energy that's trapped energy inside of her body and she sees it mostly in her chest and it's going to start be released and I say well what was the purpose for this energy so I go with the premise that um, every piece of energy in us, whether it's dark, whether it's light, has a purpose. So trapped energy may have a purpose. So I always ask about that. Not leading, just saying, you know, what what does it mean? Okay, so what was the purpose for this energy, if there was one? And um, it's revealed that the purpose was to propel her on her path. So... Um, so she doesn't need that anymore she's on her path so this dark energy helped kind of create this uncomfortable sensation in her and it put her on this path of healing and finding out more and kind of uncovering the layers of who she is as an individual all right so it served its purpose can we let it go now and I said absolutely absolutely they're releasing it now and I say what purpose did the did the cancer have acceptance acceptance of herself of who she is what she is and how she is how she shows up just the acceptance of her and the physical and I say well can it be removed now and they say nope <laughs> they were like no nope. and uh, I, I'm like well, what 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 else does it have what other further purpose does it have then and it says it needs to be there to keep pushing her forward on her path and I say, okay, well, where does the cancer sit in her body? And it's showing her her lower back and her chest. Okay, why those areas? The chest is to show her more love and to, for her to nurture herself. And um, the back is there because she needs to stand up. Her back is sore and it's almost a soreness from bending over. And from just, she needs to start standing tall and owning her power. So no more stooping or making herself small. So it needs to remain in her for a little bit longer. And, um, and, it, and then she says, yes, but if the humanness of me, which we could also read as ego, if her ego would just move forward like it's supposed to, this would all go away. And I said, what will happen if the humanness doesn't move forward? And she says, the cancer won't go away. So we're, the person the, who's answering these questions right now is not the higher self. It's actually these colors that appeared to her. And they're talking to her. And so she's getting a lot of answers through them right now, just to, just to clarify. And so I'm asking her, okay, what will happen if the humanness in, in her doesn't move forward? And it says, the cancer won't go away. And I say, well, that, does that mean that she won't ever get to experience that beautiful existence um, and that was shown to her earlier? The meadow and all of the beautiful colors, the telepathy and joy. And she says, yeah, she'll, she will die and she will leave the earth. And so she'll transition before she ever gets to that place. Okay, so then I'm taking her, I, I ask, can we explore that place a little bit more just so we can get, get the feelings of that place? And it says, yeah, it's like, it, and it shows her, it's like a magical place. It's somewhere that, um, that she wants to go to and live, like on Earth, but she's somewhere else. It's so beautiful. Or That's how she explains. She's like, it's like you're living like on Earth, but it's completely different somewhere else. And we could just imagine that it's just another level on this earth. If you if you really need to hook into a location, then we would look at it like that. Another dimension on earth that you currently can't experience yet if you're only living in the 3D. Eh, see if that works for you. All right, but so most of you don't need that. You get it. Um, but it is kind of a hard thing to grasp. All right, so she's trying to explain it here. Uh, let's see, but you're somewhere else. It's just so beautiful. It's not like you talk. It's like you just absorb things. 
and it's just love. Everyone just loves each other, and it's not like here. There's no money. It's just joy, just pure joy, and everyone is like that all the time, and we just do things that we want to do that bring us joy because there's nothing else anyway. And I asked her, what what does she appear like? She says she appears like a more childlike and, and um, blonde and, and uh, cute, and she plays a lot in a meadow. And there are animals everywhere, and they talk. The animals talk when we talk to them. And my day is all about play. And she says, I don't, I don't think we sleep. And she says, we don't really have to eat. I don't see that. I just see pure joy. And she spends her day with, with her, her love, the, the, her love that she's currently with. And um, she says she feels that same joy that exists in this place. She feels that every time she's with him currently. And I say, okay, so these colors, they said that this is, this is a place where a lot of people are going. Can you tell us how they can, they can get there? What would that transli transition look like for her and for, for others? So then she hears the, the colors tell her, the first thing I heard was that they have to do the work just like, just like she is. And that's how I get there. Just by having faith and just stepping forward one foot at a time in this process, trusting the process, because really she's safe and supported whatever happens. So for other people, there are people who aren't going to go there because they, they choose to live in fear instead of love. The people that do go, which is starting to happen now, is what these colors are saying, those are the people who make that choice that they want to know who they are and why they are here. So those are the people who are looking within. Instead of looking outside of them and it, with fear, they're looking within and, and uncovering these levels of themselves. Um, and I say, now is it going to be an all of a sudden thing for, for you or will it be more of a transitional thing? Um, I'm asking the colors this about her. Uh, she says, no, it's a slow transition, a slow progression to this. Oh, wait, no. No, that's more of my question. Is it a slow transition? Um, and it says, it, she says, now it's showing me more and more I'm in that place and it's not going to take me long to be there. When my mind stops thinking and worrying about other people and I just do things for my highest good, it's not going to take long at all. And I ask her about her partner. Will your partner, since he's there, will he match your progression? Will he be there or will he be there on his own time? And it says, he's there before I, I am, but he goes because I shift my energy. So he's actually taking his cues from her. So that is impetus in and of itself to start for her to start working on herself, for her to let go and let go of the fear and to start propelling herself into these higher higher levels of love and trust and surrender and the people around her will start taking their cues from her all right and I ask is there any more question any more information that the colors that have appeared that they would like to share with us and she says all she hears is that she needs to trust the process and it's beautiful and you are safe so Beautiful final messages from the colors, but now we're going to call forth the higher self. And I'm like, why the heck? <laughs> why did she need to see that? That's always my first question. What? Why'd you show her that? You could have showed her anything. Why'd you show her that? And it said, the higher self says she needed to see that in particular um, in order to move forward. So she needed to see more of where she's going in order to move toward it. All right, so what is it exactly that's holding her back? That's my question. Um, the light told her that her humanness needs to move forward. Otherwise, nothing will go away. The cancer won't go away. So what is, what is it that's holding her back? And the higher self says, her ego. All right, what about it? What about her ego, right? Because it's a tool, right? Or in most cases, it's a tool, but is the tool like using her instead of her using it? I said, yes. And I said, well, what does she need to do in order to move forward in the right way? Trust. Trust and surrender. What? So what does she need to start trusting and what does she need to surrender? 
she needs to start trusting herself. And I said, what's stopping her from trusting herself? The past. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there closer and closer to, to where the stuff lies. All right, we're uncovering it. So I say, is it the past in this life or the past in another life? It's from another life. And I said, can you explain specifically what that is? Something happened where she trusted herself and it was wrong and she died. I said, okay, can you show her that existence right now? Show her that life. And uh, it, it shows her that it was a really long time ago in the 1800s and she was, you know, in her, in her 40s or so and she had breast cancer. And she was a medicine woman herself. And uh, she was treating herself and she couldn't save herself. And now she's afraid she's going to do the same things. So she's not trusting all these messages that she's getting about how to heal herself. She's afraid that these messages are wrong and that the same thing is going to happen. And I say, okay, that's her false belief. What would you, what is, what is the truth? What would you like her to understand instead? And it says, all right, here's her actual truth. It is true that she is hearing, seeing, and feeling things from other places, that she is connected. She's listening and hearing for her highest good. That is true and real. And there is a big purpose behind it. This is her higher self speaking. And when it says big purpose, it, it was a huge amount of emphasis on that. The purpose is for her to wake up a lot of people, and she already has, but when she's completely healed and her story is out, it's going to change so much in this world. Big purpose. It's going to change medicine. It's going to make people have to pay attention because of who we are. And in the med medical field, people just can't turn their heads and just ignore it anymore. She's always said that her physical healing will come after her spiritual and emotional healing. And that is why she's, that's what she's always believed. And that's the way she's always believed people heal. It's spiritual and emotional before physical. And they're saying that her story will help show that to the medical world. All right, so that's what she's going to be speaking about because she's seen herself in front of thousands of people at a podium and she never understood it before what would she have to say to these thousands of people and they say that's why we showed her that that's what she's going to do she's going to be telling her story and her path of healing and sharing it and that will also help all of these other people that will spread this new way or an old way of healing all right and it said it further says she has to start embodying herself she has to trust that this is what she needs to do and that she is supported she has to be open she has to trust herself she has to embody herself she has to be open they keep repeating it i said okay well let's start explaining that to her what is what does she need to do to start trusting herself what does she need to do to start embodying herself what does she need to do to start being open okay so with the trust they explain that it's all from the past that, that life that they showed her that she just doesn't trust herself and the messages she's getting because she followed those before or felt like she followed those before and oops, she died. All right, and they're saying we're gonna start releasing that from her existence right now. And I say, well, what does it look like when you release that? And uh, they say, well, it's sitting in her chest and her stomach and um, it's dark energy and it's breaking up and going and uh, its purpose was to wake her up. All right, so it's no longer needed anymore, and what we're putting in its place is pink, pink energy. Very good. So what will she notice as this is released? She'll have more energy and more love, and she'll trust herself more. Okay, so then let's get on to the embodying herself. What does she need to do to start embodying herself? Because this is what the higher self does. They give us a, a prescription to follow. Each client is given a specific prescription to get the life that they want. So for her, part of that prescription is embodying herself. But they can't follow the prescription unless they know exactly what to do. So what I try to get is 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 more instructions what the hell <laughs> sorry what the heck is she supposed to do to embody herself I can guess but who wants to do that all right so she needs to embody herself can you give her some guidance on how to do that 
Um, so it says she needs to move forward in her relationship and just be in that relationship. She's divorced from a man that she's very close to, her wonderful ex-husband, they're true friends and partners in a lot of ways and she loves him very much. And she also has this other relationship though and they're saying she needs to cut ties with her, cut things with her ex-husband. Um, she can't still live there and stuff. Um, that That's a, a relationship of convenience right now, the, the living circumstances. And um, they're saying no, she needs to move forward with this person that's also in her life. And, and it's all, it, they all get along. It's all amicable. So it's not, she's, she's not, I don't ever want to come across as her doing anything shady. Not at all. They're just saying you need to start moving in that direction. And, um, I say, how does that translate into embodying more of herself? Because I didn't quite, I didn't quite understand that. And it said, her soul and her heart can then just be with one person and not be split between two. And I said, well, what is the purpose of her current relationship with this other, with this other guy? What's the purpose between behind that? Because that's one of her questions. And it says, it's her twin flame, and he's opening her up to love in a different way. And um, bringing up so much to clear for, for good so, so that only love can exist in her. And showing her the love she has for herself by mirroring it to her. So a very beautiful purpose behind having this new relationship. And I say, is there anything else that she needs to know about embodying more of herself? And they say, use these colors to help. She's already working with the colors. And it says that she has been collapsing her chakras into a singularity in her heart without even knowing that she was actually doing that. And they want her to do more of that. Okay, and then we move on to the root cause of the cancer. All right, um, the root cause of the cancer, or the purpose behind the cancer was to teach her to love, to love herself more. And, um, and she wanted to know specifically what was the meaning of having the cancer in her bones. She had an idea, but she didn't know if that was correct or not. And it says, it said, um, it's what she thought. It's about marrow and blood and DNA and it's generational. It is the grandmother's and she's clearing out all the ancestral stuff, more than seven generations so that her grandchildren and descendants will not have to do this. And I say, is there anything that can help her in clearing out more? Um, and it said she, they want her to meditate and visualize, and she should visualize her bones being washed clean. And they want her to use the pink light again, a pink light like rainwater, and then filling them with the pink. And I say, how often should she do this? As often as she can. How often should she meditate? Twice a day. And um, and so, let's see, her next question is, is her body upgrading to crystalline? And it says, yes. And I said, well, what, what will she notice during that process? And it says, she's already noticed more fatigue and more days that she needs to be in bed resting. And she doesn't do that. <laughs> really, she needs to do that. She needs to start resting. And she also needs to be aware that that isn't related to the cancer, um, that it, that's not what that is. And uh, it's related to her being upgraded. And so that was an important message for her. And I said, how long will that process take? And it said, it can happen overnight or it can happen over a period of time, that's up to her. If she can drop into her heart and stay there, it will happen fast. And I say, what's, what's making it happen slow? And they say, resistance there's still fear. She fears that relationship, everything about that relationship. And I said, what would you like to tell her about this relationship that would help alleviate the fear? Um, that it's real. It's not made up in her mind. It's actually happening. It's true. It's real. Um, it's planned. And that she's going to be okay. A lot of people are going to be okay. Sometimes <laughs> when a great love shows up, it seems too good to be true. People don't really trust it. And and especially if you have feelings that maybe you don't deserve this love. How can they how can they truly 
feel that way about me. There's got to be a catch. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe that for a second that someone would like me that much. And they're like, no, no, this is real. And you need to, you need to get rid of the fear. And that's, that's what's holding you back. And so it says, um, let's see, in that place that you showed her, where was that? That meadow, that beautiful existence. And they say right inside of her. And I said, what portal does she need to take to get there? If it's inside of her, how, where does she go? How does she get there? And it says her third eye. Her third eye opens up and there's just this ring of fire around it and she walks through. I said, okay, very cool. <laughs> All right, um, I mean, very cool visualization too. Let's see. Okay, how, do, how will her body be different once it's more crystalline? And she'll be able to see the energy almost transparently around herself. She'll be able to see it and energy will radiate off of her body and that energy can heal things instantly and it can create instantly. She can manifest in instantly and that's what she'll be using it for. So she's able to manipulate that energy once she's able to see it. And it says, exactly like an alchemist. And I say, are there any other skills or any other abilities that come online once she's more crystalline? And it says her telepathy will increase, her seeing will increase, and she'll, be, she'll just be connected completely. So all good things. <laughs> all right. And um, then she has a question about this. Because as you guys know, a client shows up to my sessions with a list of questions they're seeking answers to. So these are all in her list of questions. And this is one of them. Is this her last lifetime on earth? All right, very cool question, right? And where else, if any, will she incarnate? So if she's not on earth, will she incarnate somewhere else? And then this gets weird because this is very much in sync with the other session, hold on. All right, where else will she incarnate? <laughs> and it says, um, yes, this is her last time, lifetime on earth, um, but she will also incarnate on Mount Sh in Mount Shasta, Mount Shasta, it just says Mount Shasta. I'm like, can you, <laughs> can you explain that for me? And for her, and it says, there's a city under there. That's where she is. There, there are blue people and white people these are our aliens. There are aliens in there. And I say, well, what form will she take? Oh, she's blue. <laughs> and I say, other than her color, you know, is she, is she human looking? And they say, no, she's alien. All right. What is life like under Shasta? Oh, it's a different life. It's a working life, but it doesn't feel like, um, it, it doesn't feel like the work that she does. Oh no doesn't feel like here period I didn't put a period in there it doesn't feel like here the work she does there is for the greater good of people but it's busy it's like a city and there are crystals lots of crystals underneath there like a city of crystals it's powered by those crystals under Mount Shasta you guys know some of this but it's really cool to get more information okay it's powered by these crystals she learns about healing there so she's a this blue ET and she she's in with these crystals and she's learning about healing and she's in a room of all crystals and there's a crystal bed and she uses that for healing and I say is this happening right now like is this a parallel life or is this in the future and I say and all of a sudden all of this like very emotional energy comes through and it's like it's happening now it's happening now and she just becomes very emo phys like physically emotional. You can see it as she's lying there. And um and I say, "Does that mean that she can access that other part of her right now?" "Yes, she's been healing herself there." And I say, "Are you telling me that she's been going there and healing herself?" "Yes, when she does that, when she does that is nighttime. That's why she needs more rest." She's actually going to this other portion of herself, dropping into those crystal beds and healing herself. What? 
Okay, so um, I said, will this other aspect of her be embodied in that singularity? We already said these higher aspects are going to be embodied. So what about these parallel lives, that existences that she's living? Will they be embodied in that singularity? Yes, that's part of her purpose. And I say, how does she consciously interact with that part of her? And it says, now she'll be able to do it automatically because the awareness is there. She'll just have to call upon it. And I say, is the other part of her aware that she exists? Now they are. So they can start working in tandem and with intent. Now that's key. Once you become aware of these other aspects of you, you can start working with their energy on a project <laughs> with a goal in mind, with an intent. And your energy now is powered up, pointed in the right direction, pointed in the same direction. And that is huge. And I say, well, are there any other parts of her like that? And they say, yes, there's something else that's working with her too, to heal her. And I say, how would, you, you know, they, they basically they say that they're not going to show her that part of her right now. But if she wants to, um, outside of this session, access that part of her, she needs to um, bring them into their con into her consciousness. She needs to ask for that in a meditation and give them permission. Give them permission, just like she did with those colors, to come and mentally mentally come in and be aware. And I say, okay, do you have any advice for her for making sure that it's only these other aspects of her that are coming and nothing else? Because I, I know people are going to ask that. I'm like, they're always like, well, how, how do you know that it's not these, you know, dark energies that are coming in? And it says, she knows, already knows how to do that. She already knows that stuff. And she knows to call them in for their high, for the highest good and only light beings. Um, she, she's already doing that very well. And I say, how will her life change once she accesses these other parts of herself? Um, her life will be completely different. She thinks that she lives... Okay, this is cool. She thinks that she lives in a fantasy world now. There's no comparison. If she could see what is coming, she would trust now. And I said, would you mind giving her a small glimpse of, of that then? Just a glimpse of what's coming for her? And, um, and it shows her complete expansion. And it's, it's like this pure feeling of unconditional love. And one of her questions was, why is she still here? What's the purpose of her still being here on this earth? Because she, she's come close to death on a number of occasions, and, and, and she's had these diagnoses. Um, she's here because she's very influ influential, and she's waking people up. She has to stay here to complete what she came here to do. And I say, can you... Can you show her in the future what her future will look like six months down the road? If she follows all of the things that you gave her today, all of the prescription that you gave her today, what will her life look like? Um, you know, starting to trust herself, starting to embody herself, letting go of her relationship and moving forward with her twin flame. What does her future look like? And it says, I've shown her. Her next CT scan is clear. And um, she's completely happy, happy within herself and relationships around her. She's very connected. And I say, okay, now <laughs> I'm playing the devil's advocate a little bit. Show her the opposite. What does her life look like in six months if she doesn't do any of that stuff? And um, if she doesn't make any changes, if she uh, doesn't trust herself, if she stays pulled between two relationships... And she doesn't embody more of herself. What will it look like? And it says, she just slowly shrivels up. And physically the cancer will take her. The next CT scan shows more cancer. So two very different futures for her. And she's in complete control of which one she has. And I say, do you... Okay, so her next question is about her medicine journey and sacred plants because she has been called to do sacred plants as part of her healing and part of her was like do I should I do this you know I she's been doing it
but that part that doesn't really trust based on her past was keeping her from fully kind of engaging in that. Okay, so do you want to explain any more about the ayahuasca journey she's been on? And um, her medicine journey has been called for because that is a big part of her mission. And by her doing these plant medicines, it has rapidly increased her vibration and helped her to develop that trust and that faith. And she's needed to get get she's needed those to get her this far to stay on the planet because she has had choices of coming back here or physically leaving. So the medicines are a tool, and the medicines are going to be a tool of change for people in the future. They will heal people. There's no denying that she needs to follow the medicine. And she says, uh, that's her path, and it also heals her without her even knowing it. As she follows that path, she'll help others heal by it. She will be saving lives by doing this stuff. She can't comprehend how big this purpose is. It's not about her and what she does. It's about the people that follow her. She needs to share the information and know the medicine. And I said, do you have any final messages for her today? Because we were at the end of our session. Trust, surrender, give gratitude, all is well. It's the mind that creates chaos. Trust and surrender. Okay, so beautiful, beautiful message there. Some really cool stuff that came through. And then the very next day, separated by thousands of miles, because one client was in Alberta, Canada, and the other one was local here. These women don't know each other. And yet, their sessions are shockingly similar. I was sitting there, mouth wide open, like, what? Like, over and over again, the, the, the links were there. All right, so... Um, the life that they showed this next client, the first life, was just um, an idyllic existence. and She's a young girl and just shows her that life. And then um, after that life, she's out of the body and she's kind of flo floating around a little bit. And then she starts seeing the color blue. And she has the color blue. And then she sees blue beings all around her. <laughs> I was like, shut up. <laughs> Are you serious? And... Uh, and I'm like, okay, well, do they have any messages for you today? And I didn't tell her any about anything about the previous session. You know, that's not what we talk about. And uh, so she didn't know any of this stuff. So blue beings coming in the very next day. And they say, um, I say, well, do they have any messages for you today? They've been watching her, watching and guiding her. They've been acting like spirit guides. There are three of them. I said, where do they live? A spaceship that exists many universes away. What is their interest in you? Uh, I can deliver messages for them. So for this client, they have an interest in her because she can start disseminating information that, um, to the rest of us. And um, they, will, they will be there to help us and do detour from hurting ourselves, destroying ourselves. They won't let that happen. And I say, why won't they let that happen? Because if something happens to us here on Earth, to us humans, it will not only hurt us, but it will hurt and alter the universe. What happens here will affect them and many more. And I say, how will they stop us from hurting ourselves? With a blanket of light. Sound familiar? And uh, what color is this blanket of light? White, but also iridescent. And uh, will we see this? What will we notice? We will feel it and see it, but we will feel it first like a heat wave. But just warm, not hot. She says, just warm, not hot. Okay, and so these messages are from, from these blue beings. They're telling us this. Okay, and when will this happen? Now. It's already starting now, but just little bits of it, just to calm things down. And I say, is this what's been described as the event? And they say, yes. And when will the majority of it be placed over us? And they say, um, by winter, but you know, I don't believe in time frames, so I'm just saying what they're saying. You guys don't, don't hang your hat on this stuff. <laughs> The rest of this stuff it, I believe in, but time frames, I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> All right, so just as an aside, yeah. 
but they say by winter before the cold. And I say, what types of things will my client notice in her life as more and more of this blanket of light is laid over us? And um, the, it says the gathering of people that are most important to be close to. And that's something that's missing in her life right now. She can't find her tribe. She can't find this group of people. And they're saying that that's what's going to start happening in her life. So that will be different. And these people are important for her to be around. And I say, well, what is it about this blanket of light that stops humans from hurting themselves? And I say, and it says, it's the only way. And I said, well, what does the light do? It causes everything to come to complete stop so that they can be reprogrammed or redirected onto a higher way of being, a higher way of living. And I say, well, what, what reprograms them? The light changes the body. It, and I say, is this what you would refer to us as changing the DNA? And it, so they say, yes, it will change the DNA. Not just because I was like, uh, change the body. What does that actually mean? Yes, no, changing the DNA. All the cells and fibers will be different. It will feel different. And I say, um, what kind of mental changes will happen or emotional changes? I say, it will be different because everybody will just have a knowing. They have the ability to have mental telepathy. Sound familiar? So they will know where everyone is and what everyone is seeing, thinking and seeing. So there will, they will be connected in a completely different way. What dimensions would you say this propels the humans into? It grows. It grows over time. But we are working to get to the fifth dimension. It doesn't happen all at once. And I said, what will the transition look like for people? Shocking at first, but with the help of each other, it will be accelerating. So for some, like my client who's more spiritually advanced, what will she experience? Um, it says she'll be showing others how to use their new abilities and to not be afraid. And that is the purpose of many light workers here during the transition just to help guide these other people. That's why we went through this stuff, why we went through these awakenings before others around us, because we are meant to help them. Okay, so she's going to be in that role where she's helping and guiding and teaching. And I say, well, what, what needs to change in her to fully step into that role, if anything? And she is, so they say, she's not yet aware of all her powers. I say, well, can you help with that awareness? Yes, we will proceed to show her with more evidence that will gain her confidence. I say, okay, how will that be? Would that be shown to her outside of this session? And they say, yeah, because <laughs> they're not going to show her all that stuff in my session. All right, so, um, and then I ask, do you have any men messages, final messages for my client? or uh, the population at large, because we're not yet talking to the higher self, so th these are from the blue beings. Do you have any messages for, for everybody? And let's see, yes. Although you will want to go into fear of the unknown and the process may not be easy, it may be bumpy, rocky, difficult, think of it like an astronaut in a spaceship breaking through to space. As long as you know that there will be a portion of it that is difficult, when you come out of the other side, it will be beautiful. And I say, will you be showing yourself to humans during this process or afterwards? And they say, initially, we will show our presence in a way that will be accepted among you. What does that mean? We will blend. We will transform in a way that is more accepted and less, and less fear, in a way that they will look more like your pop population. So um, that's what they're saying. They'll look more like us. They'll blend in. And I say, do you, do you, what should we call you? Do you have a name for your race? And they say, we're called the Blues. And they also affirm that, yes, they are also called the Blue Avians. All right. So pretty amazing, especially coming back to back with those other Blues yesterday. All right. So then we proceed to the higher consciousness. And um, let's see. We're asking about the blues. What's her connection to them? And the higher self says she once once was one of them. And um, they'll be reaching out to her more often. 
And I said, does she need to do anything on her end to make sure that she strengthens that connection to them and receives their messages? And they say, yes. Yes, through her drawing, they will show her what to draw and she will get messages through those drawings. And um, she's an artist. And so that is how they're going to give her her messages is through her drawings. Now, a month or so before this session, I actually had another session with a beautiful... Um, acupuncturist here in Portland and uh, in her in her session she was getting messages about you know why do I always feel like there's aliens contacting me I just don't know what they're what like why you know I want them to contact me now I'm not scared of them they used to contact me in the past and what what's going on with that and they said yes they that's a part of you it's a parallel existence you are living that life and they're going to start giving you art to draw messages through your art. Same stuff a month later. I never published any of that. So all you artists out there, <laughs> start drawing. All right. So um, I say, this, should she make these messages public, right? Yes. And that will take a lot of brave, bravery on her part. And I said, well, does she have any blocks that are holding her back from stepping into that brave new role? And, um, yeah, she's fearful of losing people and friends, but she will find the more she shares these visions, these drawings and the knowledge, she will gain more than she will lose. And I know that's a fear for so many people, so many people who are trying to step in and embody themselves fuller, uh, more, more full, fuller, whatever. And, uh, that fear of losing their loved ones, losing the people around them who they, they think people think they're crazy and um but they're saying you know that's okay <laughs> that's okay you'll actually gain more than what you'll lose all right um let's see she's getting messages from the blues in her dreams and let's see they said she has some blocks in her body and i said where are those blocks located and they said her throat chakra and I said well, what's that from from so many times being hushed or told that what she has to say doesn't matter man if I could have a dollar for every time I hear stuff like that from people who are just told to stay small that what they say doesn't matter and then they create this huge block and they're there in, in order to step into who they truly are they have to get that out of them Okay, so can we lift that block up and out of her body now? What does it look like? And they say it looks like black tar, which is like this tarry black goo. And did it serve any purpose? Yeah, it did. Because, because that was there, her other abilities were able to grow stronger before her, her ability to speak out and um, specifically healing, her healing ability. She's always had the power of healing and that's only getting stronger stronger in recent days and she's able to channel and she'll be able to channel more so that block has had purpose and that purpose is no longer needed though and they put again I, I said what are you gonna put in its place and they said pink and white light for healing so again pink light man <laughs> and they don't use that all the time it was just so these are so synchronistic it was crazy and I say, are these blues a part of her spiritual guidance team? And they say, yes. And, it, and she had a question about, will her guidance team or her spirit guides, will they be with her if, when she transitions to the new earth? That was her question. And um, they say, yes, they will still be there. They will stay with her. And I say, well, what will that transition look like? Can you take her there to that time? And she, they say, um, yes and she's feeling a lot of brightness and light white light surrounding her and i say who is with her and they say her children and i say when does she go it's currently undetermined and i said well what are some of those determining factors and it will be known depending on the collective consciousness and how they react and how much they will need her here first and i say well will she be in control of that yes okay so between the event happening, she will step more and more into her role of being a teacher. 
and being able to guide others. And then she'll decide when she wants to transition to the new earth. And um, she will decide when it's okay and if it feels good and it feels right. And let's see. Um, things will change all around her. How will she get there? It will almost be like walking through a time warp. That's how she'll get there. Walking through something and coming out of the other side. And I say, does it just kind of open up when she's ready? And they say, yes. And I said, well, what unlocks that? What opens it up, that time warp thing that you're talking about? The knowledge that her children will be there too. And so she will stay until she gains that knowledge, until she has that knowledge. What will her role be on the new earth? That was one of her questions, because we called forth the higher self here. I see many children around her at her feet. Everybody is very happy, very joyful. The children are laughing and playing and delighted to be there. And she is sharing in their happiness and delight. Everything sparkles. The plants are giving off sparkles that float in the air like tiny orbs. The children are all seated in front of her like at school, but um, she and she looks very light, very airy, luminous, flowing, um, just illuminating so much love and feeling it come right back to her. And um, there are animals, and and there's a different kind of communication with animals, communicating with their minds with the animals. Animal. <laughs> There's no fear. The fear is gone. Um, the fear that once was there before with animals and humans, that connection, that's gone. And so, and on the last session, they're talking about being able to talk to animals, so also very cool. What are some of her abilities in the New Earth? Um, that was one of her questions. She can fly, float, speaking isn't necessary. So again, mental telepathy. What about things like eating? Uh, that's only for enjoyment, only for the experience. And I say, well, then how do people get their energy? They get it from the earth, from each other, from the universe. Everything is shared energy. The energy that is emitted from the earth is absorbed by people, and we give it right back to them, and we feed off of each other and the sky. That sounds pretty cool. She wanted to know, is the new earth different from what we call heaven? And will we be able to communicate easier with our loved ones that have passed? The new earth, in some sense, is like heaven, although there are still lessons to be learned on the new earth as we continue our journey and we, we ascend in levels from the 5D. Um, but communication will be easier as there won't be the, the same blocks that we had before. How will we use crystals differently on the new earth? This was her questions again. I see crystals in the oceans that charge not only the earth, but charge the water, bringing life and energies and healing in the water. When you drink it, bathe in it, the crystals and the crystals on the land are also for energy and communication, being used to communicate with other beings. Now that was shown also in a couple other sessions, how the crystals are used to communicate. What would you like to tell her about her career and about abundance while she's still here in the 3D? Her career is a matter of surrounding herself with people who believe, people that are awakened, um, people that support each other, and she may have to be the one to bring these people together. She has been searching for, for a group, for a support group, but she hasn't found them. She hasn't found that, that group, and so many other people are searching and thinking the same thing. So she will have to be the instigator to bring these people together. And um, will that bring her into abundance as well, I'm asking? And it says it will, but maybe not in the way she's thinking. But she will be taken care of. And I said, well, do you want to explain that to her a little bit? <laughs> and they say, um, things are changing so quickly and rapidly that money may not be a factor. It's more about community, coming together, and sharing each person's strengths and abilities and what they can do for each other. And how can she start connecting to her higher self outside of this session? Let me check my battery really quick. I just got a message that my computer is about to die. No! I'm just going to plug it in. Hold on for one second. Tow. Okay. 
thank you. Now, we're on the very last page, so I don't want it to die. How can she start connecting to her higher self outside of this session? By utilizing more of her crystals, trying new combinations of bringing them together, being near them and listening and feeling for connecting messages, and hearing those messages and being confident that she's hearing them. Okay, does she have, uh, this is her question. Now, this was crazy when I read this question. Does she have a special connection with Mount Shasta? I was like, what? <laughs> what? Okay, yes, her roots are grounding and running deep through the soil to Mount Shasta, just like a magnet pulling her to it. Any travel to Mount Shasta will only heighten all of her abilities. And here's another one. Can you tell her if her chakras have been updated and has her DNA changed? That was her question. Chakras have been updated, but some are a little bit weaker. It's less of an of the individual chakras now. Less of individual chakras. More of a continuous column of light fading one into the other. This was like mind blowing to me to hear this right after that other one about talking about the collapsing of the chakras. All the chakras are affecting each other and, can, and she needs to continue to ground to the new earth. Also connecting to the divine, divine white light and that will allow those chakras to not only change but heal and expand. Do you have any final messages for her today? Please know that you are such a beautiful beam of light. And do not let anyone in any shape or form dull your light. Shine even brighter than you have ever before. Your light can reach around the world and into the universe and is felt by all. Very beautiful. So those are two very powerful sessions that just came in in uh, less than two weeks ago. Wonderful wonderful women who don't know each other, super synchronistic, and specifically with other sessions that I've had that have never been published. I thought, I pretty much got the idea that um, these came like this, in this short duration, right one after the other, just to kind of hit me over the head to make sure to share them with you guys. So I hope in some way this this helps. And in some way, the, these messages, whether they're about the healing, whether they're about the, the chakras or the messages from the blues or the blanket of light, any of this stuff helps someone out there or the sacred, sacred plants or the healing of the bodies, the physical, the emotional. So I hope this helps someone. That is 100% the reason why I share this stuff. And thank you for all my clients who allow me to share their messages. I haven't been hoarding the messages, I just haven't had time to share them all, and so I'm sorry for taking so long to share this stuff with you. Um, I wish you all the best in the world, and um, I, I actually would love to meet more of you out there, and if you made it to this part in the, in the video, I just want to say I will be at um, the Transformational um, Conference in Sedona the week of September 28th through the 30th and I am so excited to be there because that means I actually get to meet people and talk to them face to face and um, I, I'm super looking forward to that so please if you're in the area come and see me come say hi I would love that I love meeting all of you 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 mean the world you do we are all doing this together I'm not doing this by myself nor nor any of my clients you are out there you are helping so thank you for your role your specific role in holding the light and changing the world and changing yourself that's where the world changes it's changing yourself so thank you for doing all the work I love you thank you all right much love